order to conduct an experiment or a field study, you must follow the scientific method. Since the 1700s, scientists in all fields of study have followed the same rules for conducting experiments. These rules help to ensure the information you learn from your experiment is true information and not just an opinion. Scientists in the fields of geology, biology, physiology, and psychology all use the same general rules. Scientists are observers. They look at phenomena and ask themselves questions. Why do some plants grow faster than others? Why do some people hate Justin Bieber? Why is the sky blue? At what temperature does water turn into steam? The first step in the scientific method is to observe something and ask a question about it. As a scientist, and a person who loves cool, refreshing drinks, I might wonder, how long does it take an ice cube to melt? So I develop my question, how long does it take an ice cube to melt at room temperature? Next step in the scientific method is to do some background research. I could go to the library, use the internet, or consult with an expert. I decided to look online and found some great stuff. I realized that it is important to measure out my water, perform the experiment multiple times, and to measure the temperature on the day of the experiment. I learned that ice melts faster in water than just sitting out in the air. Since I want to know how fast the ice will melt in my drink, I've decided to do my experiment in water. The next step in the scientific method is to develop a hypothesis. A hypothesis is an educated guess about what you think will happen. After some research and thinking about what I'm doing exactly, I predict that it will take 15 minutes to melt my ice cube. This is my hypothesis. It is based on my research and my knowledge. My hypothesis might be correct, and it might not be. That is why I do the next step. The next step in the scientific method is to conduct an experiment. If an experiment is conducted correctly, then another person should be able to repeat your experiment and get the same result. It is also important to have a list of your materials so you know exactly what you'll need for your project. Now that we have everything we need, let's get started. Step 1. The night before the experiment, set out one large pitcher of water so the water will be at room temperature. Step 2. Using the graduated cylinder, measure out exactly 25 milliliters of water for each cube. Freeze overnight. Step 3. Take the measuring cup and fill four glasses with 200 milliliters of water from the pitcher of water that sat out overnight. Step 4. Label each glass. Step 5. Drop one ice cube in each glass and start the timer. Step 6. Record the time that it takes each ice cube to melt. Step 7. Record the temperature on the day of the experiment so you can see if this has an effect on the rate at which the ice melts. The next step in the scientific method is to analyze my results. I melted the ice in four different glasses and repeated that two more times. I do notice that the average time it took my ice cube to melt was faster when the weather was slightly warmer. Overall, I feel my hypothesis was correct. I was only 12 seconds off. If your hypothesis is correct, then the last step in the scientific method is to report your results. That is what we have done here today. If your hypothesis is not correct, then you will have to rethink your experiment. Perhaps your results show something you didn't even think of. Mm -hmm.